Blessed day, everyone. The course that we will be discussing today is Introduction to Cybercrime. It is one of the professional courses as stipulated under the same O5 series of 2018 for the program Bachelor of Science in Criminology. This course covers an overview of cybercrime, including a basic understanding of of computer technology, history of cybercrimes, nature and types of cybercrimes, incident response, collection and preservation, digital investigative plan, and the applicable legal provision. For the disclaimer, all information and pictures that will be disclosed herein are for general education purposes only. I have no intention to claim nor to own it. So credits to all authors and owners. Here are a few types of attacks of cyber criminals used to commit crimes. First, we have the botnet. A network of software robots or bots that automatically spread malware. Second is the fast flux. It is the moving the data quickly among the computers in a botnet to make it difficult to trace the source of malware or phishing websites. And the third one is zombie computer. It doesn't mean that the zombie, zombie will going to attack the computer. That is not what it means. But a computer that has been hacked into and is used to launch malicious attacks or to become part of a bootnet. And the fourth one is the denial of service attacks. It is the flooding a network or server with traffic in order to make it available to its users or even will crash the devices, which this was already discussed in a previous discussion. Next is the social engineering. Using lies and manipulation to trick people into revealing the personal information, which deception is included herein through phishing. And the last one is the skimmers. Devices that can steal credit card information when the card is swiped through them. So let us discuss one by one all dimension cyber attack techniques. First is the botnet. The botnet is an example of using good technologies for bad intentions. A botnet is nothing more than a string of connected computers coordinated together to perform a task. That can be maintaining a chat room or it can be taking control of your computer. What we need to be careful of are the illegal and malicious bootnets. What happen or what happens is that bootnets gain access to your device or devices through some piece of malicious coding or add to your computer to their with their website 
making their web attractive that will encourage the user to click and to open it. Right then on, it will start the process or stages of plan of hackers, especially to those who are not aware on these activities and those new to the world of social media. This act of hackers usually happens through a drive-by download or following you into installing a Trojan horse on your computer, which at first place you do not know that it was a malware or Trojan horse. Once the software is downloaded, the botnet will now contact its master computer and let it know that everything is ready to go or it refers to the computer where the cyber or it refers to the computer being used by the cyber criminals it is where the it will notify when the software was now downloaded and installed to the user's device now your computer your phone or your tab tablet is already entirely under the control of the person who, cre who created the bootnet. Again, let us not be a new baby to what comes forth to our device nor unaware to what we are clicking. Let us not be attracted to what is shown to their cover page of their advertisement. We must become aware of our surroundings that what may penetrate to your device. It is okay to become new baby to the use of device, but not what we are clicking. Delay, think, consult, and analyze if it is only by reason of your curiosity before clicking. Why do criminals use bootnet attacks? The reason why cyber criminals use bootnet attacks is to steal financial and personal information. Hackers may use bootnets to send spam phishing or other scams to trick consumers or users into giving up their hard-earned money. They may also collect information from the device that was already infected uh, and used to gain and steal identities and run up loan and purchase charges under the user's name. Perhaps you might receive a call message or notification that you have purchased or ordered an item or items without your knowledge. The second reason is to attack legitimate web services. Criminals may use their botnets to create denial of service or denial of service attacks that flood a legitimate service or network with a crashing volume of traffic due to the volume that will severely mix the device operates very slow. Next is to extort money from victims. Revenue from Denial of service attacks come through extortion or through payments by groups interested in, in inflicting damage to a company or to a network. Like the ransomware that I have discussed in the previous discussion, which is the man in the middle. Next reason is to make money from zombie and botnet system. Cyber criminals may also list their botnets to the other criminals 
who want to send spam, scams, phishing, steal identities, and attack legitimate websites and networks. Just like also those other or some of the game masters perhaps who will sell their label and then they can use it those weapons that were earned by the by that game master so that the person who will going to buy it may able and easy for him to beat all those enemies and proceed to the next level next is the denial of service or denial of service attack as we ha had discussed that this is the installing multiple messages or files that will crash the devices it will not block or it will not make that device to block in uh, accessing other websites or uh, other files but it will only make the device runs very slow there are tips on how are we going to stop or prevent a bootnet attack first you need to set your antivirus and anti-spyware programs to update automatically second routinely check for browser and operating system updates and patches and you only click internet links or open emails if you trust the source the second attack technique of the cyber criminal is the fast flux it is a domain name system technique used to mask botnets by quickly shifting among a network of compromised hosts acting as proxies enabling cyber criminals to delay or evade detection This refers to uh, networks used by several botnets to hide the domains used to download malware or host phishing websites, malware distribution, and botnet operation. This allows the hackers to, op uh, to perpetrate their plans that creates difficult detection because this is a technique used and being used by cyber criminals to increase their infrastructure's resilience to deny listing of their IP address harder. To explain how fast flux works and to provide background, for example, Mr. Alpa, who compromises the computer of Mr. Bravo and builds botnet. He made an he made a domain name that is easily can be remembered and understood by Mr. Bravo as user. So Mr. Alpa created a domain name as Millionario Bank, which has an IP address of 34103301103. That is only the example. So this is an example how fast flux network works. This is being used by the uh, cyber criminal to hide their phishing and malware delivery sites behind an ever-changing network of compromised hosts. Researchers believe devices were infected with malware that installs a proxy component on the infected host. Every time someone wants to connect to a malicious site exposed by the botnet, the domain name system servers would provide the IP of an infected host that was at 
that time hosting the domain. The proxy component of the infected host then redirects incoming traffic to the malicious site hosted elsewhere. As shown and clean as shown on your screen, it's very clear that it all started when the device was already been infected. Next is the zombie computer. It was earlier defined that zombie computer is a computer that has been hacked into and is used to launch malicious attacks or to become part of a bootnet. When, comp when your computer is compromised by a hacker or installed with malware such as the Trojan horse. So what is the purpose of the cyber criminal herein? The purpose of the cyber criminal or the cyber criminals are usually either financial gain or malice. Attackers typically exploit multiple computers to create a bootnet and this is also being used in denial of service attack which will crash your devices in denying genuine users from their access. So this is how the uh, zombie computer works. It all started with the spammer's website. Then here comes now the spammer that will now become the spamware that will be transferred to another computer. Now when the computer is now infected with this spam, it will now create a virus which is the Trojan virus. And now this will be all swell transferred to the user's computer through mailing and once downloaded by the user wherein it will automatically download the virus, it will now create web traffic. So how can we protect your device from this zombie computer? Rational thinking over curiosity. If you are not sure, then do not click it. Do not go with the flows, but redirect your path opposite to the cyber criminal ones. This is a best secure preventing tool against these types of attacks. Sensible advice includes not visiting suspicious websites, not downloading, downloading dubious files and not clicking anything in suspicious messages. So you can only download things that are only trusted or the source, the its sources are trusted. Next attack technique is the social engineering. Trying to mislead and deceive other people until give up their confidential information. The types of information that these cyber criminals are seeking can vary depending the status of the person. If the person is rich, then perhaps he can be or she can be the chosen target. But when individuals are targeted, the criminals are usually trying to trick you or trying to trick, uh, trick them into giving them your passwords or bank information, other information that are confidential supposedly, or access your computer to secretly install malicious software that will give them access to your passwords and bank information and other needed information and which will bring them control over 
your computer and other devices or even your accounts. So social engineering includes the deceiving the victims to gain a foothold. So there are ways on how you can deceive people and how will you manage to make them believe. So includes her in the engaging the target or you will have to, to know each other, getting to know each other. Then spinning a story to make things or to make the story through and make him believe in order to get trust. Taking control of the interaction. You are going to make sure that he will not doubt or feel doubt. Next is the obtaining the information over a period of time. That includes expanding foothold. Of course, before you can gain earn trust, it takes time to develop that trust to be built between you and then the target. Then executing the attack once you are already getting the trust of the target. Then disrupting business or in siphoning data or trying now to get any information if you are given chances let's say for example when he is he did not trust you he will lend you his or her cell phone or even computer then next is the closing the interaction ideally without arousing suspicion like for example removing all traces of malware let's say for example you are only the person whom he or she let you use his or her devices. So in order not to suspect you or to remove evidence is way of removing all traces of malware. Then covering tracks, bringing the current to a natural end. It will appear as if nothing added, nothing subtracted, nothing changed. It appears same as natural as before but prior to that the cyber criminal was able now to get the information he needs and then the last one is the preparing the ground for the attack okay once he is he gets already information so we have here the four classifications that covers to what I just mentioned. Hook covers deceiving the victims to gain foothold. Play, obtaining the information over a period of time. Then exit. Okay. Closing the interaction, ideally without arousing suspicion. And then investigation that is now the preparing the ground for the attack. That is now by crashing his devices or even using his or her accounts for purchase or even stealing the money of the person. Cyber criminals try to prefer to use social engineering that will cut time effort from getting information from the target by hacking the user's devices. For example, it is much easier to deceive someone into giving you their password than it is for you to try hacking their password unless the, their password is really weak. So the point here, instead of spending time to get or hacking the device of that person, why not getting, why not to employ what is most convenient and fastest method of getting the information of that person. So the only way to make them uh, expedite their perpetration is to use the social engineering. So another what again what does a social engineering attack look like? or looks like. 
So let's say for example, if a criminal manages to hack or socially engineer one person's email password, they have access to that person's contact list. And because most people use one password everywhere, they probably have access to that person's social network contacts as well. Like for example, Paymaya, PayPal, Jcash, the uh, bank transfer. Again, this happened when you have a weak password, you are only using one password and yet they were able to manage to get that password which the password applies to all networks that you have. So once the criminal has the email account under their control, they send emails to all the persons, contacts, or leave messages on all their friends' social pages and possible on the pages of the person's friends' friends. Sometimes we even uh, receive messages that our cousin, our the persons that we do not know, and yet they are asking for a medical fee or even a load in to continue the transaction or even to claim the reward there are actually activities that were that are being done by the cyber criminals so if we are only become alert it we can able to minimize or even to uh, make that cyber criminals to think twice that become cyber criminal is worthless Okay, so give them the an eye opener that they cannot get worthy of being a cyber criminal. Instead, it is worthless. So to discuss further, I will show you the illustration how social engineering is being uh, instigated. Okay. First is the baiting. Second is the scareware. Third is the pretexting. Fourth is phishing. And the fifth one is spear phishing. This time we will go to discuss in details. So baiting, it is the use of a false promise to pick a victim's greed or curiosity so there are many ways how to deceive people especially there are common weaknesses these weaknesses will bring the chances for the cyber criminals to perpetrate their plan through social engineering one of their strategies is to place the flash drive to a place where people could see it like in public comfort room waiting areas, places where numerous people want to visit there. Right then on, when someone took the flash drive and plugged it on his or her device's port, and because of curiosity, he or she opened the application that required internet for them to have access. And that will activate the coordination between cyber criminals' devices to the user's device or to the victim's device. Some could be an automatic malware installation on the system that will disrupt the operation system of user's device upon plugging the flash drive to their device. The next is the scarware. Victims being bombarded with false alarms and fictitious threats. Because this is how, uh, have you ever experienced receiving messages either to your inbox or spam containing false alarms and fictitious threats? It's just because this is how scarware works. If the user was alarmed in panic that his system is infected that lead him to open the link that will install the malware automatically or sometimes the result would prompt the user to install software that has no real benefit 
or it is worthless it is useless or letting the people that person or leading that person to buy a software that is useless it's just because you are buying a software which is not actually indispensable to use it on your device because you were being only alarmed erroneously or you receive a false alarm this is also an advice to what is happening recently on Facebook, which is tagging a person with road picture in video, videos that you are the videos. So we were advised not to open the link. Instead, and tag yourself and block that person. Next is the pretexting obtains information through a series of cleverly crafted lines. The attacker herein will obtain information he needs through several ways of deception. He will impersonate other people by believing others that he is working with the PNP, banks, and BI, and other related offices that can help them to get a sensitive information from other people without suspecting them. All sorts of pertinent information and records is gathered using this scam, such as social security numbers, personal address, and phone numbers, phone records, and other uh, sensitive information. Next is the phishing, aims at creating a sense of urgency. It is one of the most popular social engineering attacks types. As based on what I read, phishing scams are email and text messages, message campaigns aimed at creating a sense of urgency, curiosity, of fear in victims. An example is an email sent to users of an online service that alerts them of a policy violation requiring immediate action on their part, such as a required password change. Have you ever experienced that, that you need to change your password because someone who tried or trying to access your account? So you might not even know that is you are already under the stage of the cyber crime attack. It includes a link to an illegitimate website nearly identical in appearance to its to its um, legitimate version prompting the unsuspecting user to enter the current credentials in new password so upon form submittal the information is sent to the attacker and once the attacker already received your informations writing on will going to use it and perpetrate his or her crime before you will be notified or you will now aware about what is going on to your account or you before you may change a new password a strong password so upon receiving of that information they usually perpetrate their plan without any um, delay Next is the spear phishing. Attacker chooses specific individuals or enterprises. This is more targeted version of the phishing scam whereby an attacker chooses specific individuals or uh, those business owners or even companies, banks. Spear phishing requires more uh, much more effort on behalf of the perpetrator or the cyber criminal and they are much harder to detect and have better success rates if done skillfully so this time then the uh, here in the uh, spear phishing the impersonator reaches the highest level that will lead other people to believe that includes falsification of documents in signature, 
to disclose that he is really a legit. In other words, this method is baiting the people's doubtfulness and earn trust. When trust is already earned, it opens the door for the cyber criminal to get the confidential information. So how can you prevent social engineering prevention? So there are actually tips that can he help improve your vigilance in relation to social engineering hacks. So first is the don't open emails and attachments from suspicious sources. If you don't know the sender, then you better not to open the documents attached or even the links. You may do verification if you are not sure if it might be one whom you know, but because the email does not show the name of the owner sometimes, depending on the situation, always cautious on your action. Make some cross-checking for confirmation. The point here is you, don't, you do not need to respond immediately every time you receive a message. You don't need immediately to answer their email. Next is the use multi-factor authentication. One of the most valuable pieces of information attackers seek are users' credentials. Using multi-factor authentication helps ensure your account's protection in the event of system compromise. Just like me, I use a multi-factor authentication. I use my device to give confirmation to that device or to that computer if I'm going to open my account which was not recognized by my email. This is also to notif notify me when someone will attempt or try to access my email. So if I'm not that person who is trying to open my account, then I will deny him or her to have access. So I have options to change immediately the password or will disregard the authentication for allowing the other device to have access on my account. That's the essence of using the use multi-factor authentication. The third is be wary of tempting offers. If an offer sounds too enticing, think twice before accepting it as fact. Do not be attracted to what they offer. Sometimes they only give you a cover page showing of a, uh, a very attempting, attempting contents that will actually eye-catching or you might be amazed to what is con what are the contents of that advertisement they have. So you have to be very careful on those uh, offers. Even right now, there are some sellers who try to mislead or deceive the viewers or even uh, buyers. They will just going to show you the sample of the items and these are the privilege offers or even freebies buy one take one in just a low cost once you were once you were encouraged and you believe you purchase it from them they might going to give you an item which is different from what is posted or advertised in the on the Facebook or even other social media.
Then next is keep your antivirus, anti-malware software updated so, because you have to. So what will happen if your antivirus is expired? You might be receiving some of messages, unwanted messages, and it, it will discontinue. You are receiving um, messages. It may crash your computer. The Department of Justice in the United States have divided cybercrime into the following three categories. First, crimes in which the computer acts as a weapon. For example, performing the denial of service attack or the uh, distributed denials of service attack or abbreviated as DDoS. DDoS in its method where cyber criminals flood a network with so much malicious traffic that it cannot operate or communicate as it normally would. A distributed denial of service attack is a malicious attempt to disrupt the normal traffic of targeted server service or network by overwhelming the target or its surrounding infrastructure with a flood of internet traffic. As the effect, it may render your device unable to connect to the internet. Suffering of this attack may seem like an inevitable side effect of being online. So, the more successful your site, the more likely it might seem that you'll be the target of an attack at some point. Another, your website is overwhelmed and becomes unavailable or inoperable. This attack could render your site more vulnerable to the hacking as all of your systems are focused on getting the uh, site back online and security system may have been put out of action by the attack. If your site suffers this attack, you will receive thousands of requests from multiple sources from the unknown sources over a period of minutes or sometimes hours. This request are the result of a website suddenly getting a spike in traffic. They are automated and will come from limited number of sources depending on the scale of the attack. So, how this DDoS differs from hacking? DDoS attack is not the same thing as hacking. Although two can be linked, the uh, perpetrators aren't attempting to access your website files or admin, but instead they cause it to crash or become vulnerable due to the volume of request. You might some or maybe some of you have already had already experienced receiving a lot of messages through your email from the unknown sources. In some cases, they will be followed by attempts to hack the site when it's vulnerable. But in the majority of cases, the aim is simply to make the site stop working. But the question is, why would someone DDoS on your site? There are many reasons why an attacker might want to put your site out of action via the uh, DDoS attack. These include attacks by competitors and attacks because of your content. Or sometimes 
the really it satisfies their desire when next attack technique is the skimmers it is the illegal practice used by identity thieves to capture credit card information from a card holder surreptitiously fraudsters often use a device called a skimmer that can be installed at gas pumps or atm to collect card data you might also watch those news where some uh, people sometimes from other country who installed a device or a skimmer at the gas pumps or even at the atm allowing to replicate or even to get information about those cards or informations of the cards holder so these schemers it refers to cyber criminal strategies for capturing and stealing card holders personal payment information so the identity thieves use various approaches to obtain card data one of the most advanced methods in using a small skimming device designed to read a credit card's uh, microchip or magnetic strip information that you can found it on your ATM card. That microchip contains unique code for card holder. It is the encryption locks in case that make it hard for fraudsters to instill information. The magnetic strap contains data that can be easily copied by fraudsters. Criminals can execute scheming attacks whenever a card holder opts for electronic payment methods instead of paying through physical transaction. So I'm going to show you debit and credit card scheming that are being incurred in different forms first it includes the handheld point of sale scheming this happened when a person can make use of their position or work to gain information for example if you are a cashier to a grocery store and there is an option for the customer to pay through electronic at this time if the cashier has criminal mind may replicate the card and may as well may he can or she can able to withdraw the money some will install devices attached at the atm which allows the criminal person to have its target to swipe the credit card in a skimming device to capture the information stored in the magnetic stripe second is the POS swaps is it's the principal only swaps so based on what I researched principal only swaps are prevalent scheming methods in cybersecurity the process entails fraudsters replacing a secure POS or principal only swaps device with one whose protection features have been compromised also known as principal only swaps device tampering a pos swap attack occurs once adver adversaries tamper with a pos and pin in three device so what these cyber criminals usually do to get this information cyber criminals usually steal the devices from specific retailers and manipulate them by infecting them with malware or replacing a small scheming device in the terminal software a fraudster then returns the compromised devices and waits for the scheming devices to copy and collect card data from all customer transactions they even sometimes allowing the person or trying to mislead the person or the customer that their card is not operating or cannot be read by their device so let 
they will ask that person to wait for a while, let us just fix or even ask the manager for a help. Which that person is already starting to perpetrate his or her plan. That is to replicate or to copy the information of that card. So the cyber criminals wait for an opportune time and come back to replace the skimming devices and steal the copied card data. And the third one is the self-service skimming. Cyber adversaries usually pose as technicians to gain easy access to the service terminals and install a skimming device. Or sometimes they may as well impersonate other person just to give them access to enter that establishment or even allow uh, with anything that he will make him easier to perpetrate his plan or that will expedite his plan. So, some of the fraudsters install devices inside the terminals enclosures such that they cannot be detected from outside. Next is the dummy ATMs or the dummy ATMs resemble actual entry level. So despite not being common to the compared to uh, previous years, dummy ATMs pose significant threats to the cybersecurity industry. Dummy ATMs resemble actual entry level and smaller ATMs usually purchase online but do not dispense any cash. They will only make if you might also you are if you are watching YouTube it actually uh, shown or there are already cases where they are going to swap the ATM. Especially when the person ha doesn't know the reason why he cannot in cash money or withdraw money. So the person will going to make himself a good Samaritan to lend help to that person who cannot withdraw cash without knowing he swapped already the ATM. So what is this is scheming? A scheming occurs when a cyber criminal inserts malicious software into a retailer's website and use it to steal credentials. It is harder to detect since it does not involve the tampering of physical facility. Okay? Even the uh, there are even software that uh, syndicates are using to get one peso per each account. How many billions we are here? We are uh, people in the Philippines who uses uh, online transactions okay. so we have to be very careful on using of or in paying uh, online transactions so what are the measures of curbing scheming first is the account monitoring it is essential for card holders to routinely monitor their card and bank accounts to identify suspicious transactions they can all proceed to their transactions history and they are going to re uh, then review all the inf uh, transactions made Take a look if there are some money that were being sent through online bank transfer or any suspicious transactions out there. And when you found or when you suspected one and you verified it and it is actually you are factually correct that someone accessed your account and still the money. You need to report immediately to the bank or even to the, uh, including also to the PNP for immediate action. Next is prior prioritize low limit cards. 
Cardholders should ensure they use low limit credit cards when making online purchases and transactions. I even use one if I know that there is only a few money or savings in my other ATM. I usually use that for online bank transaction. Even the attempt to access that ATM, they might going to uh, put their hands on their head and then comb their hair or even to remove their dandruff because what they can see on my account is only a zero balance or then or 10 pesos or maintaining balance which they don't have no interest already on my account so if you know if they know that the if we, uh that cyber criminals knows me that this person is holding is owning that atm they might not going to access it because they believe that my atm is only have low balance so if your ma if your atm or uh, your savings has a let's say for example uh there is a maintaining balance of 1 million you better not use it for online bank transaction or all for online payment and the third one pre-plan online shopping and shop only from trusted websites it is a recommended practice for a consumer to plan in advance what to purchase and from which online retailers there are already existing scammers so let us be cautious to whom we are having our transaction so let us know first and verify to whom we are transacting or is that seller legit or are those items being so uh, being uh sell by the uh, person is truly a legit again you need to conduct a cross checking then consumers must only shop from secured websites you may also see on the post or even comments or other you may also verify the name because it will also shows there when someone was already victim or vict was victimized by this online shop you might you might be notified or as well you might also or you may will become aware by reading their comments so that ends my presentation thank you so much i want you to keep on watching our youtube channel And at the end of my presentation, or as the end, for the end of my presentation, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Romans 12 verse 21. Continue to do good deeds. Not only good deeds, but continue to intensify your faith with God. It's about faith. It's about faith. Again, thank you so much. If you have missed the uh, first part, proceed to my YouTube channel. Then click the uploaded video entitled Cybercrime Part 1. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share so that you will be updated if there are new uploaded video or videos.